Top 10 Things to Do in Mykonos Home to beautiful beaches, interesting museums, and a thousand and one other interesting places, you can never regret going on a trip to Mykonos. Its amazing nature is second to none, and any visitors are bound to enjoy their stay. However, it can be overwhelming choosing what to do the moment you land in Mykonos. Not to worry, in this video I will walk you through the most amazing things to do in Mykonos. Trust me, if you are plan on going to Mykonos soon, you will find this video helpful. Number 10. Elias B. If you are a lover of cosmopolitan vibes, then your first stop in Mykonos should be the Elias Beach. Located on the south coast, it is an extremely vibrant place to be. From the carefree, fun-seeking visitors to its surroundings of arid slopes, it is a very promising location. Guess what? It is the longest beach on the island and has magnificent golden sands in the center and shingles beneath the low cliffs to the east. Best part of coming to this beach is that it is never crowded. This is despite the sheer number of naturalists that flock to the beach and its status as one of the most popular beaches on the island. To further make your experience enjoyable, you can even rent a jet ski from the beach's jetty or hike up the barren slopes past white, cycladic houses to fully drink in the splendor of the bay. Number 9. Archaeological Museum of Mykonos Boasting of extremely old cycladic patterned pottery dating back to 2800 BC, preserved funerary steels from the island of Rhenea off the coast of Delos and back vases from the Ionian Islands, this museum would make an interesting visit. It also houses artifacts recovered from Mykonos and neighboring islands dating from prehistory to the end of the Hellenistic period in the 1st century BC. A pithos jar from the 7th century BC with reliefs depicting the capture of Troy is among the large collection of ceramics. Lastly, in this modest museum, you will also find a statue of Hercules widening a club. This was fashioned from the finest Paris marble in the 2nd century BC and is another huge attraction. Number 8. Rarity Gallery One of the Rarity Gallery's biggest bragging points is the mix of works by well-known artists and surprisingly beautiful works of lesser-known artists too. It is a nice opportunity to explore and the gallery has played a huge part in giving Mykonos the reputation of an art destination. It opened in 1995. The gallery is a three-room space where guests can see international artists, paintings, sculptures, photography, and installations. Interestingly, pop artists Julian Obi and Carol Fuman, known for her hyper-realistic sculpture, and Hong Kong Sung Shu, known for his three-dimensional string sculptures, are among the artists' future over the last two decades. The gallery holds five solo exhibitions over the summer, so you might have to check for what is happening before visiting. Sometimes the collections can appear a little disorganized, but the curators have chosen and placed each object with care to create an enjoyable journey. Remember, you can ask one of the curators how much anything costs if it strikes your attention and you're interested in purchasing it. However, you have to be careful if the piece of art you want doesn't have a price tag. You don't want to overpay for something that could not be worth that much. Number 7. Church of Panagia Parapotiani 
Fascinating is perhaps the best word to describe this monument, located just north of Little Venice, in the Castro neighborhood. Constructed between the 15th and 17th centuries, the church is dedicated to the Virgin Mary and stands out due to its dome. It is made up of four separate interconnected churches beneath a fifth built on top. Of these five churches, the oldest is Agios Anagiros, which was built in 1425, while the other four were built in 17th and 16th centuries. You might visit for the architecture or for the breathtaking photo opportunities it provides, framing the asymmetrical white walls against the azure sky. Number 6. Alef Tandra, Little Venice. A beautiful web of little car free alleys wraps around the western edge of the old arbor. These are laid with the traditional dark marble paving stones and cement that has been coasted with the same brilliant white paint as the houses. Little Venice's nickname comes from the waterside, where restaurants open onto a narrow path less than a meter above the sea and tables for couples line the way. These structures have slightly shambly wooden bay windows boxes and blue and green painted balconies. The sunsets facing west are breathtaking, so try to get a table before twilight and look down to see the windmills catching the last rays. Number 5. Delos. You can embark on a boat to one of Greece's most important archaeological sites from the Old Arbor. The excavations on the island of Delos, which is only a few kilometers off the southwest coast of Mykonos, have been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and you can embark on a boat trip in order to see it. It is a very important archaeological site from the Old Arbor, and if you're familiar with Olympian Greek mythology, you might know that Delos is where the twin gods Apollo and Artemis were born. But the island had already been revered holy sanctuary for more than a thousand years before that. There is much to explore, including the magnificent mosaic-covered theater quarter, the terrace of the lions from the 7th century BC, the Doric Temple of the Delians and Minoan Fountain, and a number of market squares. Additionally, the House of Dionysus and the House of Masks, the House of the Trident, the House of the Lake, and the House of the Dolphins all include magnificent Hellenistic mosaics. Number 4. Delos Archaeological Museum The French School of Athens needed a museum for all of the discoveries on Delos after 30 years of excavations, and one was opened in 1904. In order to fit all this material, the museum had to be expanded twice in size in 1931 and 1972. The archaeological digs have been ongoing for more than 145 years. The pottery in this collection are the oldest items dating back for more than 3,500 years. Numerous grave statues and stele from the 7th to the 1st century BC are also present, along with clay figurines, mosaics, jewelry, and everyday objects from the Hellenistic era. Among the mosses is a bronze mosque of Dionysus from the 2nd century BC, an ivory plaque with a relief of the Mosinian warrior as old as 1400 BC, and a magisterial sculpture of Boreas kidnapping Orythea from the end of the 5th century BC. Number 3. Matilgiani Street 
Everything that goes and happens at Matogiani Street goes down at Matogiani Roadway, a street that runs north to south through Mykonos Town. With souvenir shops, boutique, jewelry shops, and a few global brands like Sephora and Lacoste dotting every inch of Matogiani Roadway, it is the perfect location for some window shopping. There is also provision for food. You can either hop into Sublaki, Ajiro, or one of the numerous taverns, which doesn't cost much compared to the ones inside town. Additionally, there is a delicious selection of restaurants in secluded areas where Baogyun Valley climbs the walls, as well as pubs that are bustling till the wee hours of the morning. Number 2. Mykonos Windmills this row of seven white windmills set atop a small headland is the first thing you see as you approach the arbor. These are angled to the north to capture the prevailing wind and were probably constructed by the Venetians as early as the 16th century. They were constructed beside the arbor to mill the grain that ships discharge to make it easier to transport. The mills, which are just a short stroll southwest of the Al Flacandra neighborhood have come to represent the entire island. There's a small gift shop next to the road and you can join the gaggle of photographers taking snaps of the white meals contrasted by the blues of the sky and the sea. Number 1 Armenistis Lighthouse. Established in response to the 1887 tragedy in which the steamship Volca sank off the northern shore of Mykonos, taking 11 lives, this structure is situated 6 kilometers north of Kora, stands above water, and was completed in 1891. It has an octagonal tower and guides traffic through the strait between Mykonos and neighboring Tinos. Every 10 seconds it flashes a white signal. Actually, you cannot go inside the lighthouse, but it is nevertheless an amazing scenery. To best appreciate the lighthouse, plan your visit for just after sunset, when you can see the light of Achiososti's and Lauti on the other side of the strait. You can also go see the original Fresnel lens, which is now on display at the Mykonos Maritime Museum. 